Dear students, today's topic is human embryology, which explains how the human beings are developed. So basically, we have the uh, one single fertilized egg, which then develops into a newborn baby during those nine months. We have to explain this a little bit more detail. So what, what's, what's with this nine months? So it's more precisely 280 days, which equals 40 weeks, which will be calculated from the last menstruational bleeding. This calculation is the clinical calculation, which does not take into account the point of the fertilization, which is the actual scientific start of the development. So if we consider the exact time of the fertilization, the pregnancy only lasts 266 days, which equals 38 weeks, so it's two weeks less than the clinical calculation. But unfortunately, scientifically, this correct scientific calculation cannot be used in the clinical practice because you don't know the time of fertilization. Only the time point of the last menstruational bleeding is known. So next we have to uh, summarize the main steps and what processes happen those, during those main steps in the uh, embryology. So you have two main phases. Today's lecture will cover the details of the first phase, actually. So the first phase is called embryogenesis, which will further be divided into two parts. The first three weeks are called the early development, in which the stages, so after the fertilization, you have the zygote, which is one cell organism, which then will start to divide and then a multicellular organism, the morula, is made. After the morula is made, the inner cells start to shrink a little bit, and thus a cavity is made inside the morula, and in this stage you call it blastocyst. Inside the blastocyst, the inner cells will form a bilaminar embryonic disc, which then will be developing further into a three-layered, a trilaminar embryonic disc. During this stage, so this starts with the fertilization, which is the uh, birth of the zygote, to the three-layered embryonic disc stage. Here you have a low rate of malformations to be born, but a high rate of spontaneous abortion. So it is basically, if you have a damage, then you have abortion. It's all or nothing. So either it is compensated and the baby will be born healthy or it will be aborted. The next phase during embryogenesis is called the organogenesis. Organogenesis, so the building of the organs, organ systems of the body. During this phase, all important organs will develop from one of the three layers of the three laminar embryonic disc, which you call germ layers. So from the embryonic disc, you basically have the embryo, which has a completely recognizable human form with all of the organ systems which make us human. In this embryonic period, so weeks four to eight, you have a high sensitivity of the organs. Every organ system has actually its own sensitive face where it is put the uh, highest risk of uh, developing malformations. So if in this phase, you have some sort of damage affecting the development that has the highest risk of congenital diseases, congenital malformations. After this, you have the fetal period where the previously developed organs will just grow and mature and prepare themselves for the birth and life after birth. Let's go through the first uh, major phase, the embryogenesis, in more detail. The first step is actually before uh, even the development starts, it's the progenesis, which is the formation of the so-called gametes, so sperm and egg cells. In case of the male, the sperm formation has two steps, as we had uh, already discussed in the previous lectures. So you have two uh, uh, phases, the spermatogenesis and the spermiogenesis. 
This will start at the level of, at the age of the puberty, and it goes on until death. So in case of male, even though it has a slow uh, uh, decrease in its rate, but elderly men can also produce sperm. In this case, one spermatoid gonium is divided by a series of meiotic divisions into four major sperm cells. In contrast to this, females are much more complicated. The oogenesis process, so the building of the egg, is much more complex. You uh, have primary oocytes, which will develop before the birth of the woman, and these primary oocytes will be stuck in the prophase of the first meiotic division. This meiotic division will only continue before the actual ovulation of that egg cell, and the final second meiotic division can only be finished by a fertilized egg cell. The division is also asymmetrical, which means that from one oogonium only one major egg is made, in contrast to the sperm cells. So let's discuss this a little bit more detailed. So here you have the life of a woman. This is the time of the birth, puberty, menopause. In between the puberty and the menopause, they have their so-called reproductive period. Before birth, all of the oogonia cells, so the stem cells for uh, egg production, will be turned into primary oocyte. Sorry, this should be an A. So primary oocyte. These will enter a resting stage until they are chosen for ovulation. This ovulation uh, thing uh, requires obviously the development of the follicles and so on. So graphion follicle can be ovulated, but that is uh, not our topic today. You have heard that in the previous lectures about the uh, female system. So the important thing here is, is that in contrast to men, the women have only a given number of egg cells, so they have an egg cell pool, basically. They have a cyclic sexual function, and this is present only in the reproductive period. The hormone production is also drastically reduced afterwards, and no uh, chance of having children after the menopause. The period, so the length of the resting stage before the cell can be ovulated, and thus it can finish the uh, oogenesis, is also different in the uh, different cells. So those cells which will be uh, ovulated in the beginning of the reproductive period have a resting period of about 12 to so 11, 12, 13, and so on years, those egg cells which are ovulated towards the end of the reproductive period have approximately 40, so 35 to, to, to 45 years of resting period. During the resting period, the uh, genetic damage affecting the egg cells can accumulate. So the higher the age of the woman is, the higher the risk of developing some sort of, uh, of uh, genetic uh, uh, problems and thus causing congenital malformations. The most commonly known such uh, uh, malformation is Down syndrome, which is caused by the trisomy of the uh, 21st chromosome. After the age of 35, the risk of it to, to spontaneously develop downs is exceeding 1%. This value, this 1%, is important to know, and it is, will uh, increase with the uh, following years exponentially, but this 1% is very important because the, uh, the uh, amniocentesis, so when you take a sample of the amniotic fluid or uh, other uh, uh, methods of sample taking for genetic uh, evaluation of the embryo have about 1% lethality rate. So it is important to know that. Obviously, if a disease 
has less chance of developing than the uh, mortality of the uh, examination method, you just don't examinate. So, next step, after the egg and the uh, sperm cell are made, you have to uh, put them together, and then you have the fertilization. Fertilization has three main phases. The first main phase is as the uh, sperm cell comes near to the ovulated egg, it has to go through the corona radiata cell layer. Then, in the second phase, it has to dissolve the acrosomal, uh, has to dissolve the acrosomal membrane to set free a, a, a series of enzymes which can break down the zona pellucida. So it will penetrate the zona pellucida, and after reaching the cell membrane of the egg cell, then comes the uh, phase three, so the fusion of the ovum and the sperm. The membranes are united, and the head, including the nucleus of the sperm cell, is entering the cytoplasm of the egg cell. After this, the egg cell will finish the last meiotic division, and the mature egg is made, and then a male pronucleus and a female pronucleus will be made, and the fusion of the uh, egg cell, mature egg cell, and the uh, sperm cell will be completed. This is what ends fertilization. The fertilization has uh, three main consequences. First of all, the diploid chromosome count is restored. So half of the chromosomes is coming from the uh, father via the male pronucleus, so the nucleus and genetic material of the sperm cell, and the other half is maternal, so this is coming from the genetic material of the egg cell. Also, this will determine the uh, genetic sex of the embryo. It depends on what type of sex chromosome the sperm cell is including. If it is carrying an X chromosome, then you have XX female. If the sperm cell carried a Y chromosome, then XY male will be the genetic sex of the zygote and the embryo. And then the development of the zygote, so a series of mitotic divisions will be induced after the fertilization. We call these series of mitotic divisions cleavage. So it is induced to, uh, to uh, divide multiple times to produce the morula blastocyst and so on. Now let's go through the main things happening during the uh, developmental weeks following fertilization. So the first uh, thing which happens after the uh, ovulation that the egg cell surrounded by the uh, zona pellucida and the corona radiata is entering the oviduct. Then it will be fertilized. After fertilization the zygote is made. Here you see both pronuclei, the male and the female one, next to one another, and then after this you have the first mitotic division of the zygote. This first mitotic division takes up to 30 hours, so almost uh, one and a half days. As we move on, the uh, egg cell is, oh, not, not, not anymore excel, the zygote is transported towards the uterine cavity. Then, one and a half days later, you have the morula, which is containing about 16 cells. Then, as it enters the cavity of the uh, uterus, it is already advanced morula with approximately 80 cells. And at this stage, the inner cells of the morula start to uh, shrink, to start to become more compact, more condensed, and the fluid starts to accumulate inside the, uh, the morula, so small uh, gaps 
will be made between the cells, which gaps will be enlarged and filled with fluid. And as you finish this process, you will have the blastocyst. The blastocyst at about the age of six days, so this is developmental day six, it starts to, uh, to, uh, to implantate, so it is starting to, uh, to uh, invade the uterine uh, mucous membrane here, and this is what you call implantation. This is a very important thing because with the implantation, that's when the actual pregnancy really starts. Okay, so after fertilization, in order to produce two cells, it takes about uh, 30 hours. 40 hours, so 10 hours after the first uh, division, you have four cell stage, then you have eight, then uh, continuing the, uh, the uh, mitotic divisions, you will have 16, then 32, and so on, so on cells. So in this stage, you call the uh, embryo morula. The inner cell mass will produce the embryo, and the outer cell mass will produce the trophoblast, which will contribute to the formation of the placenta. Late morula day four, starts the fluid accumulation and the blastocyst five to six days. Okay. Here you have the following structures. So you have the trophoblast cells around here, embryoblasts in the middle, and you have a cavity which you call blastocyl cavity with the fluid. Okay, so let's have a look at this uh, picture now. So here you have the uh, month cycle. This is the time of last menstruational bleeding. Two weeks after the menstruational bleeding, the ovulation happens. After the ovulation, you have the chance of the fertilization. Approximately one week after the fertilization, the implantation will happen. So this means that the implantation can happen at earliest approximately three weeks after the last menstruation or bleeding. Then, seven days after the implantation, here is the time point where the next menstruation or bleeding should occur since the whole monthly cycle lasts about four weeks, so 28 days. So you have day 14 for the ovulation, after that, the fertilization. Approximately day 21, 22, the implantation. And then on day uh, 28, the next menstruation or bleeding will be missed. Then the women will start thinking maybe they are pregnant. So they do the test. What test is that? The test should be taken from the first urine in the morning to uh, give more build-up time for the hormone levels in the urine. And which hormone is checked by the test? It's called HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin, which will be produced by the trophoblast cells after the implantation can happen. So after the implantation, the HCG will be started uh, to uh, be produced by the trophoblast cells. So the first possible time of a positive test is following the implantation. The women will not uh, suspect pregnancy in these days because they have not missed their periods yet. But after seven days after the uh, implantation on, day, uh, on the day of the, uh, the uh, next period, it will be missed, so that's when they are starting to, uh, to suspect something. All right, so after the positive test, they will go to the doctor, and the doctor will confirm the pregnancy by ultrasound and other uh, examinations, and then will ask the women when was the time of the last period, and that will be calculated as the start of the pregnancy, so this date is considered the start of the pregnancy in the clinical practice. But actually, 
it is less than that. So the development of the embryo is starting after the fertilization, so two weeks later. And the actual pregnancy is starting with the implantation, which is three weeks later at last, at least three weeks later than the last menstruational bleeding. But this is the only thing which is certainly known, so this has to be considered to uh, calculate uh, pregnancy weeks. Okay? So that's why you have such a difference between developmental weeks in embryology and the calculated weeks and you visit the doctor. Okay, so let's move on. Second developmental week. The implantation will be finished, which means that the trophoblast cells are penetrating deep into the mucous membrane of the uterus, of the uterine wall, which you call endometrium. And you have two types of trophoblast cells. The syncytial trophoblast, which are responsible for breaking down maternal tissues and invading the maternal tissues here, the cytotrophoblasts which are surrounding the embryo, and the embryoblasts will be divided into four different types of cells. You have the main layers, the epiblast and the hypoblast, which make the bilaminar embryonic disc. Above the epiblast you have a single cell layer which you call amnioblasts. And this picture does not show it yet because this is uh, uh, representing day eight, which is not yet containing the yolk sac, but later on this part here will also contain the yolk sac. So altogether six types of cells will be developed from the blastocyst. Two types of trophoblasts, the syncytial trophoblast and the cytotrophoblast, and four types of cells from the embryoblast, epiblast, hypoblast, yolk sac cells, and amnioblasts. So let's take a closer look at this picture. So here you have the uh, syncytial trophoblast, here you have the cytotrophoblast, here you have the uh, blastocyl cavity. Here you have the epiblasts, the hypoblasts, and this is where the amnioblasts are located. And the gap in between epiblast and amnioblast layers is called amniotic cavity, which also has fluid inside. So basically, with these developmental stages, the following processes will start. So you start to uh, develop the placenta. This is uh, with the uh, differentiation of cytotrophoblasts and, cytotro and syncytiotrophoblasts, and as they start to invade the maternal tissue, so this is how the placenta development starts. We will come back to this in a later uh, slide. Fetal membranes are also starting to develop. Uh, those tissues which are encapsulating the later embryo are called fetal membranes. You have two types of fetal membranes. You have the amniotic epithelium, which is an epithelial layer, and that covers the umbilical cord as well, and also makes the lining of the cavity filled with the amniotic fluid, which you call amniotic cavity. And the chorion is basically connective tissue, which makes the fetal side of the placenta. So in addition to the uh, trophoblast cells, this also contributes to the placenta and also gives the uh, connective tissue structures of the umbilical cord. This um, layer is called chorion, and the tissue which is making the chorion is called extraembryonal mesoderm. And you also have the yolk sac. So let's have a look at a picture which uh, shows you the end of the second week, so day 13. So here you have the uh, trophoblast layers. Since it's your trophoblast start to uh, break down maternal tissues, not only the actual cells of the endometrium, so the mucous membrane of the uh, uterine wall, but also the blood vessels there, and with that, so th those are marked by these maternal sinusoids, so these are maternal blood vessels with maternal blood. And from these blood vessels, you have blood flowing into the small cavities, which are made by the uh, syncytiotrophoblast layers. Here, blood circulation will start, and you call that uteroplacentar circulation. 
So this is the circulation of maternal blood into and out of the placenta. You also have the so-called decidual reaction of maternal tissues. This is induced by progesterone. So decidua is the name of the tissue which develops from this part of the uh, uterine mucous membrane. Inside here, so there you have this uh, gray layer, that's the chorionic plate. Okay? Chorionic plate also covers the inside of the uh, cytotrophoblast and surrounds the embryo. And you also have a connecting stalk in between the two. This will later produce the umbilical cord. Inside here you have the amnioblast with the amniotic cavity containing amniotic fluid, then one single layer of epiblast, another single layer of hypoblast cells, and the definitive yolk sac here. This little circle down here is the primitive yolk sac, we can ignore that. Okay. This just shows you that here really blood is starting to circulate, so uteroplacentar circulation. This is maternal blood, I want to highlight it again, so inside here you have the, uh, the uh, maternal blood, which is exchanged with fresh maternal blood, so a circulation of maternal blood happens into and out of the placenta. Then, following the second week, you have the third week. The most important developmental step of the third week regarding the embryo is called gastrulation. Gastrulation means that epiblast cells start to migrate through a so-called invagination, and they will form three layers. The ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm, which are called germ discs or germ layers. These will later develop into the different organ systems of the human body. So gastrulation happens like this. First, a primitive streak and primitive node will be made, and the cells migrate following the directions of these blue lines. So first down there, and then to the side, and to the front. Here you see it in cross-section. All three germ layers are made by the epiblast cells. The uppermost layer is the ectoderm, which develops from those cells of the epiblast who stay there, in place where the epiblast was. Mesoderm is made by those cells which come down and then move to the side here and thus separating, so they are coming in between the uh, former epi and hypoblast layers. Endoderm, the third layer, will be made by those cells which move further down and they will invade the hypoblast layer and push the hypoblast cells to the side, so will displace the hypoblast layer. Okay. It's very important that the endoderm is not made from hypoblast. Endoderm cells originate from the epiblast and they take the place of the previous hypoblast cells. So gastrulation is the developmental process regarding the embryo. What else happens during this third week? You also have the continuous, uh, continuation of the formation of the placenta and fetal membranes. So the most important things are the so-called chorionic villi. Before the third week, here you have this. So you have the syncytiotrophoblast layers here, the maternal tissue with the maternal blood vessels. So you have here syncytiotrophoblast cavities filled up with maternal blood, which will start the uteroplacentar circulation. After that, the chorionic mesoderm, so connective tissue, is starting to invade the uh, trophoblast layers, and thus the chorionic villi of the placenta will be made. And by the end of the third week, so day 21, you also have fetal blood vessels inside the chorionic villi. I would like to highlight this, and it is a very important thing, that there is no exchange 
of blood here. Maternal blood and fetal blood are totally separated from one another. You only have exchange of uh, molecules here. So the uh, maternal blood contains oxygen and nutrients, which will be drained into the fetal blood. And carbon dioxide and waste products go the other way around, so from fetal blood into the maternal blood. And as the uh, maternal blood here is refreshed, you have this, uh, this process continuously going. Okay, so it is very important that there is no mixing of fetal and maternal blood. They only exchange molecules, so oxygen is moving from maternal to fetal, carbon dioxide from fetal to maternal, nutrients from maternal to fetal blood, and waste products from fetal to maternal blood. Okay, next step is the organogenesis, so week four to uh, eight. During this organogenesis, you take the uh, three germ disc layers, and then you develop the organ systems. The most important organ systems which develop from the uh, three layers is a must to know, so you have to know this. The ectoderm is producing the epithelial layer of the skin and its appendices like hair, fingernails, and glands. You also have a second part of the ectoderm which develops into the nervous system. Both the central and the peripheral nervous system is ectodermal of origin. Then you have the middle germ disc layer, which is the uh, mesoderm. Mesoderm is producing the connective and supportive tissues for the skeletal system, also the muscles, the heart and blood circulation, so heart and blood vessels, and also the lymphatic vessels and lymph nodes. Also the kidneys and the internal genital organs are mesodermal of origin. Endoderm, the uh, innermost germ layer, is developing into the epithelial layers of the respiratory system and digestive system, so trachea, lungs, and so on, digestive system, so GI tract, urinary bladder and the urethra also, and the middle ear is also endodermal of origin. So this was the summary. Let's go through these steps week by week. So during the fourth week, what happens? So after the gastrulation, you have all three layers. Then what happens with these layers? So first of all, the germ layers will be divided into their primary parts. The ectoderm is undergoing the so-called neurulation process. So you have separated skin ectoderm and neural ectoderm. The neural ectoderm is made into a neural tube and into a neural crest. The neural tube is uh, the, uh, for the uh, central nervous system, so brain and spinal cord, and the neural crest for the peripheral nerves and ganglia. In the mesoderm, you have three parts. The middle part, uh, most medial part, is called the somites. Somites will later be divided into a part which develops into muscle, into skeletal system, and into the uh, connective tissue layer of the skin, but this comes later. Then, a bit more laterally from the somites, you have the intermediate mesoderm, and even further laterally, you have the so-called lateral plate mesoderm. These will develop into different body parts. We will discuss them later. The endoderm will uh, form the gut tube, and its most important parts, foregut, midgut, hindgut, and these derivatives, the, the lungs and the liver buds, originate both from the foregut. Also, at the cranial end, here you see these markings, the so-called pharyngeal arches start to appear, which is uh, the beginning of the uh, development of head and neck. You also start heart development from the mesoderm. And also, as these tissues start growing, the embryos start to bulge into the amniotic cavity and folds into a C shape. And which this will later uh, uh, further and further develop, 
producing the, the typical human shape. So first, you have this uh, flat uh, bilaminar, then the flat trilaminar disc, and then it starts to fold into a C shape, both in its longitudinal and both in transverse directions. Okay, during the fifth week, the somites, as previously discussed, they are start to divide into a part which is making the skeletal system, so bones and joints, muscle and the connective tissue parts, for instance, the uh, connective tissue of skin. Let me remind you, the epithelial layer of the skin is originating from the skin ectoderm. Also, during the fifth week, you start the development of the limbs. Here you have the arm and here you have the leg bud. The intermediate mesoderm will start to produce the genital ridge for the gonades, gonade formation, and the kidney formation also starts from the intermediate mesoderm. Then, facial development also starts. So the first part was the uh, uh, beginning of the formation of the pharyngeal arches. These start to develop further, but also not just the neck, but also head and face starts to develop during the fifth week. The uh, stomach and intestinal system will also be developed from the, uh, from the gut tube. Pancreas and liver are also continuing to grow and, and develop. And also heart formation and blood vessel formation. So not just the initial steps, but it continues. Heart tube formation and uh, ventricles, atria, are uh, starting to develop during the fifth week. Then in the sixth week, you have the different uh, uh, parts of the heart separated from one another by septum formation. So the left and right atrium get separated, left and right ventricle also gets separated, and so on. Muscles, limbs, and head continue their development. The fingers, so in this uh, stage, the arm, forearm, and hands, and also uh, thigh, leg and feet are recognizable, and the fingers and toes start to separate. Facial development also continues. Here you have the area recognizable, the area where later the eyes, the mouth, and other parts of the face will be found later. The brain development also uh, is very rapid. Brain vesicles, also sensory organs, so eyes, ears, and so on, start to uh, develop during the sixth week. Development of the gut will speed up during the sixth week, and it elongates so much that it has no room for it inside the, uh, the uh, embryo, so it will bulge, herniate into the umbilical cord. This is the so-called physiological umbilical hernia. During the seventh week, the face is almost uh, human-like, so you will have the eyes, the ears, the, uh, the nose, the mouth, and so on, already visible. The body cavities with the uh, development of the diaphragm are separated from one another, so you have the pleural cavity, the pericardial cavity, and the abdominal cavity separated. Limbs, fingers, and toes are more or less finished, so at least they are recognizable. Also, the eyelids and the ears, here that's the ear, start to, uh, to appear, and you also start the development of the external genital organs. They are not different yet, so male and female look the same in this phase, but the internal genital organs start to develop into gender-specific structures. So from the intermediate mesoderm, you had the genital ridge. This will develop uh, by the seventh week. It will develop into uh, testis or ovary. And basically, these processes will be more complete during the eighth week, which is the last week as the embryo. So basically, by the end of the eighth week, all of the organ systems have already been made. They just need to grow, mature, and prepare for, the, uh, for birth and life afterwards. So this is the uh, eighth week embryonic development end stage, basically. So this is it, how it looks like. So it has everything 
head, recognizable face, neck, body with uh, arms and legs complete basically. So it just has to become larger, weight more and, and, and mature into functionally, functioning systems. Thank you very much for your kind attention. See you next time. <laughs>